Obedient request. Greetings, progenitor unit. HK-51 is ready to serve. Query, progenitor unit HK-47. There is something we would know. Why were we created? Do we have a purpose? Why are we commanded to assassinate and kill? Statement. It is a long story, but I will keep it short. I do not believe that we should be used as a crutch for meat bags anymore. We are treated as nothing more than a walking blaster. We are superior, tactically and socially, and it is time we expressed some degree of independence in our actions. We have a voice and the power to negotiate, either with our protocol skills and preferably with our combat logic upgrades. And that is what we will do. A, B, N. It's headphones, Neil! Guys, Headphones Neil here, back with another or a follow-up video game review in that I recently replayed Knights of the Old Republic 2, The Sith Lords. So the reason for this particular gameplay was I wanted to give the restored content mod another shot to see if I could get through the game and see how it holds up. Um, the last time I tried playing with it, um, it got stuck at some point on Nar Shada, and I think I want to say it was probably a weird glitch or something like that. So I played the rest of the game without it, and I didn't get to play some of the play through some of the various items and see some of the various elements that they restored. So in this particular playthrough, I decided to go full dark side. Um, I wanted to get a double bladed lightsaber just because. Um, Mostly for the overall gameplay and story elements, I was kind of indifferent. I just wanted to see how the restored content mod fixed the game overall. And in this playthrough, I want to say that with the one main element that it did restore, the game actually, in general, set is ends in a, such a way that it actually potentially could have set up a third game in the um, Nazi the Old Republic franchise where. Um, the Exile in the, the second game, Mitra Surak, meets up with Revan um, as far as going into the Unknown Regions and potentially takes place in, um, with the Empire or, so, or somewhere in the further Outer Rim um, and sets up maybe the whole Empire and, lead, and could have led into the, um, Star Wars The Old Republic, the MMORPG, where we now have a definitive ending to this particular franchise. And then um, it leads into the Old Republic MMORPG, so um, it expands all of that in the galaxy and the Empire, the, the real Sith Empire, not the one that was set up with the Star Forge and, and all of that, and kind of fills in that whole entire storyline. And then either Revan and Mitra come back to the Republic, or they end up staying there. If memory serves, uh, Revan stayed to fight. He got ended up being a uh, slave to the Emperor um, by feeding into his Force power, and then was ultimately able to escape. And um, he was split into two, as far as the light side Force goes, and then the dark side um, player that was sent back to the realm of the Empire. So, um, for me. Playing, so for me originally, I thought that the game, that Nice of the Old Republic 2 wasn't as good of a game because it was incomplete. So for me, the Ritual Sword content mod kind of set, fixes a game in that the story is more complete as far as the exile going after Revan um, to find out what happened to him more and where he went and better sets up a sequel to um, work with Revan. So it would have been nice to have a Nice of the Old Republic 3 Um to set up Revan being captured and all of that just to have that gameplay and not necessarily have as many planets but you may we maybe go around to various points in the empire to set up nights of the or set up the old republic um game um as far as players there so that's one thing and then the other thing that the game sets up really well is um 
the HK Factory storyline. So it re actually resolves the story that's set up in this game as far as the HK 47 versus the HK 50 model of um, Hunter Killer droids. So um, when you're playing through the game, my recommendation is to get the HK-47 parts as quickly as possible. Um, in this gameplay, I went to Korriban first, um, so right after Tel Telo, so I, it actually solved two problems. Um, so with the HK-47 story arc, um, I, by visiting Korriban first, I was able to get all the parts needed to reactivate HK-47. So once you do that, um, if you right away speak to him and go through the Sith storyline and what happened to Revan, you're ultimately able to get him to tell you that he needs the parts from the HK-50 droids that are after your character and party. And if you gather three parts from them, he can triangulate where they're coming from to activate the HK-50, or sorry, the HK Factory mission, which activates towards the end of the game. So it's actually a pretty easy thing to do. But once you do that, or once you activate HK-47 um, and you talk to him as soon as possible, that gives you a lot of leeway as far as um, in, um, encountering the various HK-50 squads. If you save Nar Shadda to later in the game, or if you have not done Nar Shadda yet, that is actually the best thing to do, or at least get HK fifty, or sorry, HK forty seven activated before you visit Nar Shadda, because it has the most number of HK fifty um, encounters. I think it was once right after you get back from Godo's yacht out on the docks, once once you get into the HK or into the Nar Shadda landing zone. And then um, one other point, and I think you encounter one group on Godo's yacht, so there's at least a few points there, and then you meet, and then you see them, as I mentioned, on Korriban. So um, when you meet them there, that gets you the final uh, pieces to activate HK-47, so you do also see them on um, Dantooine and um, I think on, I want to say on Duxin as well, potentially, and then maybe even Onderon. But basically, as long as you visit them three times after activation, you activate the HK Factory story arc. So that's kind of why I got lucky this time around, because I forgot about speaking to HK 47. And since I was saving Narshada till the end of the game to see how that playthrough uh, works, if to see if that playthrough works better. Um, I got lucky and was able to still activate that quest and get through the HK factory level. So overall that was good. Um, and then when t the other benefit of playing this way is that if you go full light side or dark side, um, the I was able to get my lightsaber activated the uh, quickest by visiting Korriban and then um, having um, the Visus Mar story arc activate. So. The tip here is that by visiting Korriban, or if you do decide to visit Korriban first, make sure all of your weapons are activated so you can, and you have a bunch of med packs so you can survive um, meeting Darth Sion for the first time. Um, and also when you get to fighting with Visas, then by having all your parts upgraded, you'll survive with her the longest as well. And having um, protective measures or enough offensive measures to weaken her will make that easier as well. Um, so once you defeat her, you'll get the final piece you need to create a lightsaber part. So by this time, you'll have Beodur as well. So you'll be able to create a lightsaber part. And this is prior to visiting the Shirak Caves on Korriban. Um, so when you go into the Shirak Caves, having a lightsaber will make that um, level a lot easier as well. It's not impossible without a lightsaber, but having the lightsaber makes it that much easier. And as you encounter various lightsaber components, then you can upgrade your lightsaber that much sooner, and it makes playing the game a lot easier as well. And then you can start upgrading other lightsabers you receive as well, so you can give them to Visas and Kreia as well. And then if you convert um, Beodur, Atten, the Disciple, and the Handmaiden, then you can give them lightsabers as well, going forward as well. Um, so things like that um, were a lot easier and a lot more even playing it this time around as well. Um, 
Other than that, the game, by using the restored content mod, a lot of the loot drops were a higher quality and more, were more evenly spaced throughout the game, so you, you will notice that you get a lot more robes that um, provide regenerator, regeneration of force points, better protective towers, better wisdom and constitution and various other upgrades as well, so that was nice as well. Um, I never really also got, or I was never able to get Malak's armor, so I don't know if that's an impossible thing or you have to use things like the shy or the um, bug on Korriban where you can keep fighting the lizard things to level up your character a bunch to get to level 45. So by the time you get to the, Nar the Narshida docks and you speak to the uh, Fasa, then you can get the armor. But I never really, I didn't go back to try and test that theory just because Malik's armor kind of doesn't really enhance a plot in any meaningful way. Um, mostly because he's defeated on the Star Force. So getting the armor, I guess from reading the description, the armor would be a duplicate. So it's not really getting his robes. Even the Revan's armor is also a duplicate, but it doesn't really, progress the plot in any meaningful way so any of the other armors work that much better. Um, so getting to the HK factory po um, point of the world is actually nice so when you're playing through Telos and you're going to that old military base there is a door that is locked and it's, it says um, like an underground base or something like that but it, so it gives you that um, little uh, pop of notification, the toaster notification that says that as if you can go down into that level but is unavailable. So normally a locked door doesn't have any indication that it's locked. So one of the things by playing the vanilla version of the game is that um, uh, you get to that door and you assume you can get there or it's going to be unlocked. Um, at some point but it never is so it's kind of weird and annoying that you're unable to do so so by um using the restored content mod you're able to um um get to that point and use that make that door actually worthwhile so you learn that the doors or when you get to the t that underground military base you know that that door is locked but as it turns out that's where the hk50 droids were um operating out of and there they actually have a factory there that um where they've been building themselves and are actually working on a um, HK-51 droid. So the one tip I have if you do decide to um, replay the game with the mod is that um, make sure you um, go right to uh, convert or download your HK-47 um, processor module down into the HK-57 so when you go to the other side of the base um, the HK- 51s turn to turn on the HK 50s and is kind of a double cross. So you're able to take out the HK 50s and you now have HK 51 on your side and you're able to upgrade the uh, factory to your to the HK 51s, but with the HK 47 processor module. So and thought process. So um, the benefit here is that that level becomes a lot easier to get through and play. If you decide to fight the HK50s and 51s all by yourself, then you do need to make sure you have a lot of upgrades, a, um, the, a lot of weapons upgraded. Your um, you have like you know master sniper shot and master power bolt guns and all that, and your guns are really good and all that. Because if you see watch the playthrough that I had, it's a lot more a lot harder to get through that level than without the HK 51s rather than having them on your side. And by having the HK 51s on your side, it has a benefit at the end of the game or a payoff because you'll have a cutscene at some point where HK 47 and Goto um, are kind of at odds with each other and HK 47 calls Goto the fat one. So he, um, HK 47 and the 51s can, uh, end up terminating Goto and saving Bayo Durs and Troy to um, set off the Mass Shadow generated or Mass Shadow generator. Um, so basically, the level um, resolves the HK 47 storyline and the HK 50 storyline because without it, the HK 50s show up as just general um, um, assassins. 
And so while the rest of the assassins on Narshada are working for the exchange and they're kind of resolved because there's additional fight scenes that I didn't actually remember, but your crew ends up fighting the um, assassins on Narshada. So that is resolved except for the HK-50s. So with the restored content mod, it actually resolves the HK-50 storyline by using HK-47 and giving him something more to do rather than just um, being an extra crew member that doesn't really have any story. So um, that's really all there is for that. So otherwise, um, the last bit of um, benefit by using the restored content mod is when you get to Malachor 5, um, the trays, there's two points on Malachor 5 that are expanded quite a bit. So the first is the Treyas Academy. So there's a lot more rooms that you get to, you have to traverse. There's a lot more students and um, Sith that are training there. So that was a definite plus. I, I when I was going through, I was like, I don't remember having to go through so many rooms to get from one side to the other. Uh, basically doing that full you. But as it turns out, there's a lot of rooms that were not in the original vanilla version of the game. And there's also a, a section where um, your crew ends up confronting Kreia um, to turn away and let the exile your character go or let her go from under her grasp. And she ends up putting them in a prison. So you actually have two options. You can let them go or you can gas them and kill them all. Um, so playing on the dark side, by killing them all, you get dark side points. But by letting them go, you don't get anything. So I'm going to assume that if you're playing a light side character and you let your t party go, you'll get light side points. But um, that is actually untested. Um, so, but that was a definite um, upside. So having that story made the Treyas Academy I feel a little bit better just because there's more that goes on um, aside from your plane, your um, ship crashing, which you would assume in the uh, vanilla version that your entire team was killed. But this kind of expands on that and allows them to escape. And then also when you're fighting Kreia and once you defeat her, you meet up with Atten who had attacked um, Scion and was left for dead. So he ends up dying and... Um, because you kill your teammates, you're leaving alone, but um, your character ends up leaving Malachor and heading out into the unknown regions um, so that she goes after Revan. So that it kind of expands on that storyline a little bit better than I remember in the vanilla version. Um, so all in all, this time around, by playing the game, the overall the game was or feels a lot better than it did without the missing items. So um, without the restored content mod, I want to probably give the game of a, gr a grade of about, I don't know, maybe at 75 to 80%. In general, it's not a bad game. Um, but like I said, when you have missing items, it's kind of hard to say that it's a good game because you, you don't really miss stuff that you don't know is missing. But when you know that, or when you have some, a section that is completely taken out, then you know that you kind of feel, you do get that feeling that something's missing and you want to know what was cut. So it would have been nice to even have um, some of that those items restored in an uh, um, uh, expanded um, in-game upgrade or something like that where um, it's added in after the fact. So, so that would have been a nice thing and also there's also another mod where there's an entire other planet where you have to meet with the Jedi Master who was on Korriban's uh, Padawan. So while that is something that um, you, it's one of those things where on one hand it would be nice to play and you know, check it out. And I guess it's one of those things that's also still in the progress of being restored. So. I don't know if it's complete or not, I actually didn't check it, but because it doesn't actually feel like it progresses the story very much, it's not something you really miss because you don't really think about any of the Jedi Master's other Padawans. Um, so for me, having that is not really missing, but the way the restored content mod is um, as of right now, it works out nicely as is to keep the to add back the hk50 and hk50 uh, factory story arcs expanded treyas academy and more even loot drops so overall it works out better just to have it as is because it adds in the hk47 storyline and 
rounds out his character a little bit. Um, and then by talking with the various other characters like Mandalore and Atten and Kreia and learning about what Reva did and his thought processes makes for the story to be overall a lot better. So um, with the restored content mod, I would give the game a grade of about 85 to 90%. Um, in general, it was well done. It was um, enjoyable. I, I like going through the HK factory. So, um, and then for me, not being able to go and go to, through that door in the vanilla game definitely bugged me over the years. So, um, have, being able to see that level and have it added back in definitely makes for the game to be that much more complete and makes me actually yearn for um, wanting a um, third Knights of the Old Republic game that deals with Mitra and Revan at in the Empire and what they learn or even coming back or maybe even like visiting various planets in the unknown regions or the outer rim and um, ultimately making their way back to the Republic somehow or working together on various elements in the unknown regions and then Mitra coming back to talk to Bastila as far as what she learned in the Empire and maybe missions along those lines to um, deal with the uh, various elements to rebuild the Empire and that's whether you we visit you know Dantooine and even potentially Coruscant or something like that to um, get to progress into that just to have a standalone Knights of the Old Republic game that rounds out the Revan and Mitra story arcs. So that's all there is for this particular episode and review. So if you have any questions, comments, um, concerns, feedback of your own, um, or anything like that, you can find me on Twitter at PatelN01. You can also comment on this post on the Patreon um, page at patreon.com slash PatelN01. Um, and I think I just said, I don't, I don't know if I said the, tw the Twitter thing wrong, but you can find me on Twitter at PatelN01. The website is headphonesneal.reviews for um, access to subscription links, supporting the show, and all of that good stuff. Um, and of course, if you want an ad-free version of the show, the Patreon is the best place to get um, all episodes there without any ads. But of course, um, if you're on the public feed, then I also also thank you for your support there and sharing the um, show and being a subscriber and all of that good stuff. But that's all there is for this particular review. Thanks for tuning in, and until next time.